I would like to call the executive meeting for the Zoning Commission on May 9th at 7, 11 p.m. Um, I'm acting chair for Stephanie Phillips. Um, 771 and 815 Barnum Avenue cut off. Uh, nothing, right? That's it's being held still, still open. open. Approval of the minutes of the joint meeting. Uh, we just have one amendment. Uh, we're going to add Dave Fuller to the uh, members present. Do I have a motion to approve the? Well, actually, a question because I remember uh, Gavin sending an email and he did note that I wasn't listed as an alternate. Like it says, alternate Mr. Watson, and it just has my name. So. You were present, so. Right. I was present, but I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Oh, as an alternate. So there are two corrections. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Can I make, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, um, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the, the uh, minutes of the special meeting on, uh, geez, what date was that? It's not. Uh, the 18th. April 25th as uh, no 18th, 18th 18th okay as April 18th is written <laughs> so I, I start that I all second? over <laughs> by Mr. Paul. Oh, right. all in favor aye aye, aye. five zero uh, there was not, was four there zero uh, the minutes from April 25th 2017 any discussion Mm. I'm good. So, could I have a motion? I'll make a motion again to accept the uh, minutes from April 25th of the uh, Zoning Commission public hearing. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. Uh, discussion takeout restaurants versus or V dine in restaurants. So I'll just okay. quickly, did everyone get the handout in their recent mailer? I can't remember if... It wasn't in the recent one. I okay, so then I this one we, we, may, we may actually push back until the 30th. It okay. may be going in our next mailer. Um, I wasn't sure, so we just kept it on there. Yeah, I looked all over for it. I couldn't yeah. find it. Open, when I, open door key? No. The, uh, the dine-out restaurants. Oh, the dine-out restaurants. Yeah, I thought we did, did give it at one time. I remember seeing it. I thought I did, but... You better redo it. It was, uh, we'll send it out again. It's basically that the, some of the concerns that we've been getting were regarding um, some of, some people feel that we've been a bit burdensome on some of the smaller takeout businesses like a deli. We treat them exactly the same as if they're a 50 seat restaurant. Um, so there was a thought to maybe reduce some of the potential burden in terms of application uh, and, and approvals for a uh, takeout, a deli. So what we've done is I put together some, uh, some language as to um, what some of the potential options might be for what we would change to. And um, if you haven't received them, we'll make new copies and send them out. I won't spend any more time on it, on it tonight. Just brief introduction. That's it. Okay. Chair Phillips is here, so we'll switch back. No, no, no. <laughs> Not getting off that easy, <laughs> sir. I was, I was all ready to get comfortable. Oh, see. Yes. <laughs> no. No. We're done with that? I thought you were doing a great job. No. <laughs> So, Madam Chair, what you're getting settled in, I, I was just explaining to the rest of the commission um, some of the reasons why we put together some of the uh, uh, a potential text amendment for takeout restaurants versus dine-in restaurants and how we might uh, reduce some of the approval or lighten some of the approval process for uh, 
some of these takeout restaurants yeah. or delis. Um, yep. And we weren't, I wasn't sure if it actually made it out in the mailer this month. It doesn't sound like it did, so I'm going to mm -mm. send it out again. No, we did. Everyone will get it in a week or so, and we'll be able to discuss it on the 30th. Right. Okay. So you are up this to... Is such a, such a fine point. Okay, bedroom equivalency discussion? Okay. We also have to add something to the agenda. Did you add it to the agenda already? <laughs> the uh, carnival for Rotary. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's uh, would you put it on? No, the, the agenda had already gone out, so we would have, we're going to have to waive the rules for that. Okay, so let's do that and get that done with okay. before we get too far in, because um, I send a note out to everyone about it. Thank you, Ms. Pepin, for doing an awesome job. Anytime, if you want a promotion, you have my vote. Well, we've got a couple more months, though. <laughs> okay. Dr. Rotary, I guess. Okay. Um, I want to interject into the agenda to add the uh, Rotary, Stratford Rotary Club sponsoring of the Coleman Brothers show. I will need a motion to uh, amend the agenda to add it to, to add this to the agenda. I make the motion to, to amend the agenda and add the Coleman Brothers shows in. Thank you. Is there a Sorry. second by Mr. Paul? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. You all should have gotten the email, mm -hmm. um, and in fact, you know, I'm doing this, and I don't even know if I can vote on it. I don't think I can, can I? Well, let me, let me say this. It can take four votes as well, and that's all we have. This is, as you told, I need to disclose the fact that I am a member of the Stratford Rotary, okay? Um, it is my choice to recuse myself, but I will take your advice. I do not think it will impact my ability to comment or uh, have an opinion on this, but I do want to disclose that, that I am a member of it. Okay, does anybody feel that I should withhold my comments or discussions? I will abide by that without a problem. No. Okay, okay. Um, I think most of you are probably familiar with the carnival that happened, I don't know, this is like its 10th year at this location and 20th year all around. It used to be over by uh, the Army Engine Plant. Are there any questions that anybody has? It's in the same exact area, if I'm correct, right? Nothing's changed. The only thing that has changed is uh, as part of this new practice until we get the uh, new zoning rules um, implemented, anything that comes up um, for anything comes before this board to make a decision on. And this is ap happening this month in a couple of weeks, on the 20th I believe is when they start. So when they came forward, it, for them they normally come in, Jay always gave them a permit. We went through it. Now Jay moves it to us, so it had to wait until we met. And that's why it's being added to the agenda because it didn't come in in enough time to go out with your packet. Any questions? And otherwise, I, have, I just have one question. So, so we pay for a fire and, and police. The town pays for that. Uh, no, security it, will be arranged. So they pay for it. They're, they pay for it. They pay for everything. everything. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, I didn't it, realize it was that long either. I thought it was only like, like a long weekend. It started off as a long week. Oh, okay. Years, years and years ago, ago, it was a long weekend, and it was too many people on those three days. Yeah. So they turned it into a week to, so that everybody well, didn't. It's a lot to set up. <laughs> it's a lot to set up, and from a safety standpoint, it was easier to manage. Yeah. Of course, from the organization standpoint, the, the Coleman brothers, if they want to go somewhere, you know, for them to make a suitable enough profit, they want to be there long enough. Well, I think it's to make nice it worth people it. People can see it from I-95, so they'll come to town and they'll grab a bite to eat somewhere, and they'll, you know. They do love that location for that exact reason, and it's beneficial to the other businesses, mostly the restaurants. Yeah, that's there. They, you know, they benefit off of it. Yeah. But you know, aside from that, it's they do it. If, it, 
I don't know if it even says this. I, I can share with you that a, um, a sizable portion of the proceeds is donated to the Stratford Rotary Club, which they then use for their charitable giving. That's the arrangement. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a requirement of the Coleman brothers. They don't go into any community unless they're supporting a charitable organization. But they pay for the police, the space, overtime, and everything. Any other questions? Mr. I would Paul? like to make a motion. Make a motion. To grant them their petition. Application is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Giuliano. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so that's done. Going back to the agenda. We were at a point of the bedroom equivalency discussion. Um, and hey, do you want to talk to that? Have you spent any more time on that? No, basically, and the way we left it at the last meeting was um, I was just going to <clears throat> refine some of the uh, sections um, that would be affected, do a final analysis of the rest of the zoning regulations because sometimes sections are referenced seven, eight, nine, ten times throughout the regulations. So I'm basically double checking, making sure all our I's are dotted and T's are crossed so that um, when we decide to vote, it doesn't have any other impacts. Um, so essentially what we're going to be doing when I bring in the final proposal for review on the 30th, um, we'll be removing section 5.3.5, which basically explains the bedroom equivalence and the cap and how it's broken down by neighborhood. Um, will essentially be allowing residents' apartments in RS4 and RM1. Those zones are your um, least restrictive. They're located in the center of town, closest to all the, all the stuff that, you know, the um, high-density residential should have near it. Um, and then lastly, um, we're not making any changes, but I'll just highlight for, for you all that um, Section 5.1.7 will remain the same, and that is truly what will govern the residence apartments going forward. And I'll just read it for you. It says, um, residence apartments are subject to the limitations set forth in section 5.3, and they're subject to the approval of the zoning commission as a special case. So they will all require any apartment development, eight units or more, will require a special case in any zone, but more, more specifically, RS4 and RM1, the residential. So we're refining that, and we'll put that together for you on the 30th. Okay. And the next steps, just to kind of review the process, after we look at it on the 30th, if we should proceed with it, then it goes out to all the other organizations, the, why don't you name them? I know one of them is the... Metrocog. Metrocog. Department of Me Energy and Environmental Protection. Um, we will refer it then to... Is there a council municipalities or something like that? That's Conference. The Council of Governments. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, it will, I'll prepare an application. We'll send it out to everyone, let them know that we're doing it, and uh, the, we'll send it to the Planning Commission the following month. They'll review, give a recommendation, and it will come before the Zoning Commission for a vote. Okay. Any questions? Um, this will also, once they, once the Planning Department, Planning Department, once the Planning Commission reviews it, provides their recommendation. If it comes back to us, well, either way, it comes back to us, it will have a public hearing here as well. Correct. Okay. And what we'll probably do is try to put a little more effort, maybe using social media or something, to let the public know. I'm sure there are going to be comments one way or the other. And since this doesn't have um, bordering properties, we'll do our best to let the public know. and proceed with it well. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to uh, just throw out, um, should we have make sure legal looks at this so that this doesn't open us up to some kind of appeals down the road? Yep. The, uh, the text, any text amendment that... As far as I know, they look that, at it. ...that's proposed by an outside source or internally by ourselves, a copy of that is sent to the town attorney's office for their review. And we'll get their comments. 
Okay, thanks. Would it be helpful, and you can ask, would it be helpful to compare this to what other communities have so that when we look at this, we can talk intelligently about what Milford is doing or Shelton is doing or Fairfield is doing? Is that easy to, to grab off their website? Sure. Well, it, as I've mentioned many times, there are no towns that are doing currently what we do. Oh. And what we're actually changing to is what most towns are actually doing. Um, and a actually, most towns will have a zone set up specifically for these type of uses. We're actually doing it so we're not opening Pandora's box so that we've got to create new zones, change zone designations. This is a, actually a far more streamlined and probably more conservative approach to what other towns are actually doing. Um, so we could, I could probably do an analysis, but it would, it would take some time. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to get it done probably by the 30th, unfortunately. No, I don't think it would need to be. I'm not even thinking. Actually, the planning commission may have more of a question around it than even mm -hmm. we would, and we would dovetail off of what their questions were. Anything else, no. Mr. Giuliano? Sure, Madam Chair. So actually, we're just going to get rid of 5.3. We're just going to make it a special case. We're getting That's rid of it. section 5.3.5. And we're going to make it a Each neighborhood is, has a certain amount of bedrooms that are allocated right. towards uh, residence apartments. Yeah, because there's 13 neighborhoods. but. The other point, too, is we have to decide on if we want to go with, place it with one or both of your following options. And going over it, I think we need to put them both in there instead of just using one of them. I thought we made a decision on which option to go with, didn't we? Did we? We did. Yeah. We it was did. either to create a new zone. Or um, the new zone, then, would be RM2 classification. Correct. Yeah, we decided not to do that or to allow it an RS4 and RM1, which it would be essentially, I, I, I see it as essentially the same thing. Um, it's just there's the, without the heavy lift of creating a new zone, changing mm -hmm. the zone designation for potentially hundreds and hundreds of properties. Um, and essentially, they both do the, the same exact thing. All right, opinion. so we, we definitely said that we wouldn't do the RM2 class because of, of all the uh, paperwork and everything else going on with it. Mm -hmm. Well, and also, where would we put it? You know, what neighborhood would we change to a... RM2? RM2. I mean, and that in and of itself is a challenge. So this still, the purpose of it is so that we can still maintain tight control, but allow some units and try to avoid the need for every do, every development or application to be pushed to a uh, 830G or something like that, but still give us the control. Special case is still your greatest um, tool to manage applications. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, it, if you're okay with that, any other questions? We'll kind of go along. Um, I don't think we have a campsite review no. or a zoning enforcement study, right? No accessory apartment applications. Um, sediment erosion, we're going to wait until we hear that property again, so we're okay with that. Planning projects, Greenway, I hear there's things happening now in Greenway. I don't know if last night, did they, did they take it off the table? What did, do you know what they did with that last night? I, I tried to look on the website. This, I was this there afternoon. all night long. I don't think they actually got yeah, to it. I don't think they did. Okay. so. Yeah, Steve, you don't That's remember where hearing we it at all. Right now, off the so. table. Yeah, I don't think they got to it. We need approval from them to move to approve forward. to to approve move the forward. Right <coughs> forward. So. Yeah, I don't think they got to it. Okay. Not that I heard, anyhow. Okay. No. Uh, Jay, would you get that? You would get a notice of that, right? From planning, from you don't. No, <laughs> they don't. Oh, so we're, I just have to look at the minutes. Okay. I, I looked later today, I mean earlier today, like late in the afternoon, but they weren't up, so it takes probably a couple of days. So. Right. Okay. 
But I know everything has been now finished other than moving the grant forward, correct? Yes. Yeah. I know, um, just on the side, I'm off topic a little bit. I know Harold Watson has been looking to get uh, donations for bike rats. So that's the next step. He's got a good price from one of the vendors and they're trying to include that in it. So They're, they're having a bike ride too, I think. Somewhere. And they're having a yeah. bike ride, yeah. Saturday. This Saturday. Yeah, so it's, it sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on, other items. The fee schedule, the amended fee schedule. Do we have that? Because we were supposed to do that. You did bring that to my attention. And I bet we don't have copies because I didn't bring my copy. I'm a bad girl. Uh, you brought I yours? I do. I can, oh. I want to know what I mean. I can just let you look at it. I can well, I, I, I didn't have any problems with it. I remembered it. Steve's a good boy. He brought his too. I can just give a brief explanation. Mark did too. You have yours? Yep. <laughs> I think the only question I think that there was, and we started, I think it was just mine, it was the fee on one item, and I think it was a residential item, and I think you convinced me that we didn't need to change it, and I remember it was $60, whatever it was, or something like that. Maybe it was the sprinting fee, the you were extra charge, charge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we reduced that, and that's the one that it was basically just saying that our re-roofing fee, we charge $105. At least we were supposed to be charging $105. At some point along the line, the, the office felt that it was too much, so they started charging $25, which isn't enough. <laughs> so uh, after looking at what most other towns are doing, um, $60 covers our state fee that we're required to send to OPM whenever we process a permit. Um, and it also helps cover the cost of the staff to, to look at the application, make sure it's filled out correctly. And we, and in effect, we're also able to reduce it by $40, make it a little bit easier on your average homeowner who's coming in to pull their roofing permits. Um, and then the general, the general homeowner's permit, those have all stayed the same. Mm -hmm. The major things that have increased are the applications to the businesses, to the, uh, to the boards. To the boards. Uh, they just weren't covering all the advertising fees. Our advertising fees go up, they're through the roof, and uh, we run out of money every year on advertising. So it's really just to cover advertising. I get a question. Um, to encourage our applicants to provide digital maps instead of these big monster maps could we have a deduction or a discount if they provide digital maps as opposed to the big i make them so i i keep digital map i make them submit when i upon my request so a large scale project they're I can request at any point for them to submit a USB flash drive with a digital copy of the entire file when I know that more than one or two people need to see it outside of us. That way it's much easier for me to share and then we're, we don't have the burden of making copies for all the town attorneys and all the extra departments, um, which can get up into the six, seven hundred dollars, which costs us. So. Um, It might work for this board. I, it's more of a discussion for everyone else is how they would rather receive the documents. Um, do, mo do most now probably do it that way anyway? I mean, to start with or no? I would say most, most do it the way we, we currently do it, but I um, think more and more towns are probably moving towards digital. digital. Um, you know, not everybody has, yeah. Well, the bigger I, companies, I would. I, I can comment because my business is in IT, and I tend to service a lot of engineering firms, particularly in architectural firms. Even the little guys now have gone digital. Everybody's gone digital. So some of, the, some of them have gone to the point where they go out and pay somebody to build, you know, to do the large maps. They're getting rid of all those big printers because they're expensive and expensive to maintain. So there is a real push on the industry side to go digital. Um, I think it would be better as a board, for one, if we had digital maps, 
Um, and you could, maybe if you wanted to request one or two big maps, but if you had a digital map, you could look at it on your computer. We could post it in other places. Um, it, it's, it's really up to us. I mean, we can also say we want both all the time. Mr. Paul. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the, um, the way we should be going is more digital, more technology. As long as the format and the ease of navigation online is there for us. Uh, and, you know, I, I'd like to bring a laptop in here even and, and have that up on my laptop uh, as we're meeting with the developers going over their presentation. So I have no problem. I'm very comfortable with digital if we want to go that way. Um, again, it just depends on making sure they're just not going to throw something out there that we can't read. And so we have to be specific with kind of uh, what kind of digital media we're talking about so they don't jury rig something that's going to be unreadable. Well, and everybody has their own preference. I mean, I have two people that I share plans with on a regular basis in town hall um, who refuse to look at anything digital. They don't like, they like to be able to make notes on maps. They like to be able to make adjustments. They like to be able to save a copy. Um, so it, another thing that, look, I'm all in favor of going digital. It's less paper, less things for me to do. All I have is someone's, it's, eight flash drives and I just mail you a little flash drive instead of this enormous thing. Far easier for me. Um, I think looking at large scale maps can be tough when you're looking at it on a traditional computer screen as opposed to having something folded out. Um, my personal preference is when I'm actually, I won't look at a digital copy when I'm doing my staff comments. I like to stand and look and look at the entire thing without having to zoom in here and there. So. But it's up to you. What, what if we do a digital, but maybe you get one, one master hard copy kind of thing for you, and if we have to reference it, maybe we can use it you know, for we that purpose that. if we want to put some footnotes on it? Let's take your idea a little further. How many of us want a hard copy? How many of you want the map? Steve I, does. I prefer it's a okay. hard copy. I, yeah. I, I, I think I do still. Two, three. We okay. have to have a hard copy for the file. So. Right, four. I have a, I have a question, though. Um, I've been on this board about three months now. Where are you guys storing all this paper? Well, we're, we're <laughs> That's the problem I got. We got, you know, we've thrown away so much paper, and this is costly. So we have to try to figure out how to <laughs> use the media we that can save money. It, Keep in mind, it <laughs> probably pays a lot of people who make the copies. Yeah. As somebody who works in the in printing business, business I'm uh, happy to <laughs> see that happen. <laughs> That's what I think. Well, why don't we do this? I take mine to recycle, or I try to give it away to somebody who might be interested in the project um, when I can. I have got boxes. I have a, another suggestion would be that I could, no, uh, instead of making it optional to submit a flash drive, I can make it a requirement. And then anybody who wants digital copies every month, you come in with your USB, and I'll just transfer it over for you. That's the other option. Um, my worry is that people leave, we get new people, and I'm constantly changing the format yeah. every, yeah. you know, because the forms, they're lengthy. I mean, our zoning commission application is 14 pages long, and it talks mm -hmm. about what each thing needs to require. So. At some point, not now, but at some point down the future, I'd like it so that it would be nice, maybe the next chairman, that they put up online and, you know, when they come in here, they have projectors and it shows up on a projector and we don't have to yeah. deal with everything in front of us, but we're not there yet. Towns with big budgets, that's what they're doing. Then they're great. Yeah. Can, can you just take the file and, and just give us the, the link name, a file name for it, and we can just grab it and download it to our, our local hard drive. And sure, yeah. rather than looking for a flash drive, I should be able to go online and- Sometimes they're small enough you can email them. Most of the formats, they do them in a PDF depending on what they have. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got a lot They're of not all online though, right? Some of them are just documents that you wouldn't be able to send a link to. Is that correct? Well, I would have to take them. I would have, to, well, first I would have to pay for a commercial Dropbox account. Right. You'd have to buy one. Uh, because there's a, only a finite amount of storage you're allowed to have, the free version. I don't know how much a commercial Dropbox account would cost. 
but I would have to upload them to that and then grant everyone access to, to those documents. It might be cheaper um, to put it out in the cloud? No, it's the same thing. Well, I don't want to get us too, too off topic here. Um, I, we'll continue with the hard copies, but if, we, if they could supply a digital along with them, especially in your discretion, you know, when those bonds to package, because I probably would take the digital over the paper. Um, is that okay? We'll just continue until we can change our system appropriately. Yeah, I have a question sure. on that. It's not on the new technology. <laughs> it's old school stuff, the J. On number seven here, uh, permit fees, uh, sheds over 100 is 160. Next page. Oh my God. Uh, under is what, 125? Under 100 square feet is 125. And yep. that's current. Nothing has changed. Yeah. Now, do you feel that's a little high? <laughs> Especially even the other one for a shed? No. Is that typical for everywhere? Because I have no idea what. Anybody else does? No, it's typically, that's typically less, actually. Um, you know, there is a lot of work that goes in, you know, you have. To do the shed. For example, if my wife was to come into my office um, and apply for an above ground pool or shed, they would come in, ask for the application. I would probably spend 10 minutes explaining where you can put it and then tell them, now you need to draw a plan to scale that shows me where your thing is going. Mm -hmm. And I get that. So then we spend another 20 minutes and, mm -hmm. you know, we're very ser customer service oriented in our office. We will sit and we will help the resident draw the plan to mm -hmm. scale so that they can submit. They don't have to go home. They don't have to hire somebody. So that's paying for our time. And you're prob we're probably losing money by the hour of what you pay us <laughs> to help them with that. Yeah. Um, you know, you get the 30 year seasoned uh, contractor who comes in, I think. Those are the two polar, polar opposites, but I think for the most part, we're, we're right where it needs to be. Yeah. No, that's great. I just wanted to know. No. It's a good question. It's a, you get that a lot. Everybody wants to know about a shed. Every, everybody's a shed. You know? Yeah. Keep it mm -hmm. back three feet, no higher than 12, uh, on and on and on it goes. Yep. All right. No, thank well, you. Well, we're at a point, if there's no other questions, Mr. One, one other comment, though, when you mentioned customer service, and uh, I talked to a lot of realtors, and uh, there's a lot of great compliments coming to the town of Stratford uh, in planning, zoning, assessments, about customer service way and above and beyond what we do in the other towns. So kudos to you guys, and keep up the good work for that. Thanks. Nice. And there's one thing I do want to add. There was a typo, and uh, it's regarding commercial and industrial new construction. What number? Uh, number 7E. It says $4 for every 100 square feet plus the $60 state fee mm -hmm. with a minimum of, uh, it says. 660. Uh, mm -hmm. 660. That was incorrect. The minimum of 360. So that's the only, that was a typo. Any other questions? Because uh, we'll ask for a motion. Is there a motion to accept? I make a motion to accept the new um, Ms. Pepin, fee thank schedule you. for zoning. Second? Second. Mr. Rodaskis? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion pa passes unanimously. Thank you all very much. That's You're welcome. Account. That's a good accomplishment. <laughs> the roofers will be happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be a lot more roofing job now. Yeah. Well, when I told them roof. That we can no longer allow you to slide for twenty-five dollars until the zoning commission officially changes it. I have to charge you one hundred and five. Yeah, they weren't happy about that. <laughs> um, this is a new item, I believe, the three fifty-two open door seating from May to October. The open door T, correct? Mm -hmm. You want to bring us up to date? Sure, the applicant uh, has requested four to six uh, outdoor seats during the months of May and October, basically our outdoor, uh, outdoor seating season. They um, had submitted their proposed outdoor seating and 
and I consulted with the zoning enforcement officer. We've received no zoning issues, complaints, or we've issued no violations um, for the property. Um, they will have to go to the fire marshal to make sh for vetting to make sure that it meets all their safety requirements. Um, so the office planning zoning has has no concerns about the, the request. Any I, questions? No, I, I just have a comment. I think it'd be a nice idea for. Um, some seating out there for when the um, when the concerts are there and stuff. I think it's absolutely. A nice idea. Oh, yeah, I, I have another comment. I think once we do this, I think this is going to maybe open the door. I think there's going to be other people in that area that are going to want that, which I think is a good idea. Like uh, Commissioner <coughs> Pepin says, for the concerts. Uh, there's other places right next door. Eventually, I hope they could do it because. Mm -hmm. I think that's the plan, Mr. Cuscus. No, I agree. I think that having people out on the sidewalk kind of livens up the neighborhood and people driving by say, hmm, what's going on over there? Cool. Mr. Paul, you're okay? Uh, yeah, it's a great idea. Just that uh, they're going to have like those railings so it gives them kind of a buffer from traffic walking up down the sidewalk. Yes, that they would have to have it enclosed. That's one of the requirements. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, and I, think, I think it's a good thing. It's very attractive to do that in our town. I, I agree. I think it's very attractive. I just have an easy question. I thought that whole block had the option of outdoor seating. Wasn't there some kind of ruling that said that they could have outdoor seating or did they have to come to us for every single one? I don't, I never, I don't remember that. It, uh, you know, I'll tell you where else I, I heard this at. Um, down by Maxwell's, they also had the ability to have outdoor seating because when it was designed, and I'm going back and later. When those larger, wider sidewalks were put in, I thought that it was part of the zoning that, that they could have outside seating and they just had to go through the permitting process, not that they necessarily had to come to us. Not to my knowledge. Um, there may be a specific area that was done outside of the zoning regulations where maybe it was administratively decided that Stratford Center doesn't have to come back. There's nothing in the regulations that says, it that, says that. That I know of. There was just the three that are here, Maxwell and, and um, Mexican oh. restaurant there. And okay. But I'll double check. I'll double check. So does that mean that every year this business or any business like this will have to come back for approval? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think we ought to change that. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, they shouldn't have to come back. They shouldn't have to come back. You can do it to the unless, they, they unless come, there's a they come uh, once. problem with, right, with the police or, department complaints yeah. or something. Maybe a suggestion that uh, when they Initially. when they are when they're initiating it, they come once. That way, we can look to make sure there's enough sidewalk space. Mm -hmm. There aren't any other issues that we're creating, and then after that, are they serving alcoholic beverages? No, it's a tea. No. It's just coffee and tea at that. Yeah, so you don't have to bring your own car and bring your own booze over there. And that's a separate <laughs> liquor permit they would have to apply for to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah, okay. But I like that idea. You know, as long as, and if there's a change in ownership, they have to come back. Oh, no, no. That would that would be expected, yeah, wouldn't it? There. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little stuff. Little stuff. Yeah. So you would write that up as a amendment to one of the zoning regulations or a new one? How would that be administered? Yeah, we'd have to, I'd have to look to see where we would put it um, and then figure out um, I mean, what the I, language would be and then present it just the way I've been doing it, show you what, what the plan is, the purpose of it, and the intent of the regulation, one or two options. You folks say we like this, and then I prepare the actual because amendment they, and go forward. I think one or two tables is okay for a certain amount, but when you get to more tables outside, then I think they need to come before. Well, I, it was supposed to be done by square footage, but I think oh, Jay's okay. going to look at it. All right. But here's a question. Do you want them to come back every year and get a permit from Jay, even if they don't have to come, or the zoning administrator, even if they don't come before us? Yeah, just or do you want to give them like a three-year approval and every three years they have to come back or if there's a change of ownership or two years? Yeah, I, you know what? I, not to be... Uh, evil about it but maybe we should because to keep everybody honest so you could go four foot and then you're saying 
just, you know, next year I'm going to go five foot, or I'm going to do the four foot, but I'm going to go five foot, or I'm going to go six foot. I'll bring I'll up. That's uh, what most towns do. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was I was bringing up this alcoholic beverage because when I lived in Glastonbury for a short time, they have a restaurant uh, where they allow people to to dine on the sidewalk like this proposal is asking for. And then the next thing you know, uh, people can bring in their own wine. And then the, the, the wine bottle gets opened by the establishment, and you can sit there and drink wine out there. So oh. watch out for what's coming. So I think the idea of annually doing this thing, even though it's kind of crazy, it, it gives you a checkpoint to make sure they're not changing the business. So what we're looking at is the zoning administrator has the ability to give the approval unless he sees or she sees fit to bring it before the zoning commission and it will come before the zoning commission if there's a change in ownership or it, or they're establishing it for or the first time or establishing it for the first time sound good yep all right we'll start working on it probably we'll won't see it on the 30th june's going to be awfully busy too <laughs> yeah june's going to be busy we'll work, we'll start working on it though well i got a feeling that you're going to see several other you know, businesses start coming forward, especially, I think Ms. Pepin said it, once one business moves outside, everybody else kind of likes that idea. We see it blossom. Well, the sitting duck and the place next to them, they have outdoor seating. Yeah. They have that. And I also know when um, Donut Crazy moves into their new location, that's a major part of what they told us they wanted to do was the to be outside. Cream, I think the ice cream place did too, if I'm not yep. mistaken. They actually got a the place next. seating their first time The around. first time around, yeah. So I, I think you're going to see more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the other restaurant is thinking of doing it too now down there next to the ice cream shop. But that, it, it makes it a nice kind of yeah. community, so. And it makes it like right. a beautiful TOD there, Madam Chair. <laughs> <laughs> now all we got to do is move the train station. Move the train station <laughs> there. The train station over there. Yeah, okay. yeah I think they really love that. <laughs> Okay. Any other items that we need to talk about before we go into goal setting? Uh, Madam Chair, do we, do we need oh, a motion? Yeah, we have to vote on that to have you look. Yeah. We're, what are we no, voting we're on? Vote on three, three, oh, five, that's right. We didn't vote. Yeah. I thought uh, we. I make a motion to, to accept the uh, petition to allow the open door tea on 3552 Main Street uh, to have an outdoor seating of four to six seats from May until October. Uh, with the condition that if anything uh, changes on an annual basis, they still have to come in and get approval from our town uh, planning department. Okay. I second. Second by Ms. Pepin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. We're good. We're getting some things done today. I just have one comment, not about that, but, but um, I won't be at the July 25th meeting. The okay. July 25th? Yeah, just so you... Well, you're not going to take us with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's two of us. I won't be here either. Oh, we may have to look at that meeting. We may look at that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Looking forward to our goal settings. Um, and I'm going to make a suggestion because there's some items that are just sort of hanging on and we're not actually able to, I think, focus on with everything that we have. The signs, I'm going to make a recommendation that we strike that from our goal setting because I just don't, I think we have a lot on our plate right now to actually tackle that. Does anybody else have an opinion? I agree. No. We need a motion to uh, strike that. I'll make the motion to strike signs from Mr. our Gaffin. goal setting. Second by Mr. Paul. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we'll leave the Army engine plant because that's really an update. And, and actually, Gail, if you can do a favor when it says SAP property, just put the word update after it, because that's all it is. Any news? No news. Okay, that's easy. <laughs> um, the, mar the medical marijuana methadone, other than the update that we received last week, we, our next step was to invite people to come in or see if we could get permission to, to visit, but our first thought was, I thought, to bring people in. Right. Yeah. So, well, there were and there were two options. There was one to the field trip option. I didn't get a lot of feet, a lot of response from that, okay. uh, which I think we all kind of thought that was going to be the case. Most businesses weren't going to want a group of people coming in. Plus, we were going to have an issue with recording and and all that. Um, 
I have called uh, I've called the Bramford and Milford Planning Commission. Um, didn't hear back. Sent emails to see if any of them are willing to come in and speak. Um, and I'm waiting to hear back from them before I reach out to an actual uh, dispensary yep. company because um, I think you might get two, two narratives there. Mm -hmm. So um, and I think we're probably more interested from the administrative side than we are from the private side. Um, what I'll do is I'll probably maybe wait till the end of the week or maybe next week and reach back out and see if anybody's willing to come. The, there, were there were people who were interested in opening up yes. locations in Stratford. Um, would it be inappropriate for them to, without putting an application, give us an idea of what they think the locations, the landscapes might be, or should we wait till there's an actual application from them? Well, they would jump at the opportunity to come back here, <laughs> to come and tell you anything that you answer any questions that you have. And I think they might be they might be helpful in terms of very few people are going to know more than they do about what is happening at the state changes in permits, how many permits the state is issuing, they'll probably know more than most people at the state. Would you all have an interest in inviting them to an administrative session to ask them questions, hear what they have to say? I, I, I don't have a problem with that, but I want to be the big stick in the mud here. I don't know how long we're going to drag this out. It's been three years. There's all kinds of regulations. The states, everybody's got it. That. I, I would just hope that'll be our last maneuver on this so we can get this going and get it going and have somebody here. I, 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 I'm just... No, it's a good point. And I think we, we kind of share your that. feelings of let's get this done. It's just which is the most efficient, appropriate way to do it that stays within our purview and, of doing it. And your story from our last meeting, you, you got you to gotta really love that one. What? <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I mean, who, who would have ever thought, you know, here we are worried about, and they, they, got, they got more stuff than our schools have. How they, <laughs> how they tracked me down is still amazing that they tracked me down. You want some internet kind of thing. They did. Who's this lady? The, they, Facebook they, something. They, they have, found me. No, they got great technology. If you're on the highway in the middle of the night going through a work zone that's supposed to be 40 and you're doing 80, they have a camera there that takes your picture of your car and your plate better than you could take. Trust me. Well, it was a little <laughs> scary to think that I must have looked that suspicious because I was on my cell phone talking to someone while the other person, Pat, was, you know, looking at the facility and taking pictures that they thought we must have been casing the place. So it, it was, and they were very serious about it. The Milford police were very serious wanted to know who I was and everything. I think just my one last thing I wanted to add is that we left it kind of unsettled at the last meeting. Where do we want the dispensaries? Where do we want I was just gonna... the production facilities? We're, and there are two schools of thought, and they're both on the, on the, um, the draft regs that we had sent out, and they, mm -hmm. they talked through exactly what the thought process is how you want to regulate it, whether you let the market determine itself or you tell them where you'd be more restrictive. There's very few places that they can go. Um, and um, that's it. Once I get that direction, all the other stuff, the security, the distances from schools, that's all pretty template stuff that we're doing. It's the only real thing that we need to think about is where we're going to allow them to go. And I'll just make a comment about that because uh, I'd love to see it go into an area that's kind of like industrial, but more importantly, a brownfield conversion. Let's get our brownfields back on the tax roll and let's push it in that direction. I, I was, he was inside my head because I brought this up the last time too, and we weren't going to do that light industrial after seeing the picture of the other one. I mean, you can make a great that, that place was, you would never know. I mean, it, it's got great siding, great steps, uh, slate. I mean, it's unbelievable. So even if it went to a light industrial, it would kind of rebuild some, make something look better there. Maybe they could take over one that's not so great looking. And then, you know what else I forgot? Uh, I found out they're not open until 10. They, they have, they're, 
They're open to like maybe six at the latest mm -hmm. or something. Somebody said 10 o'clock, and when I no. checked, I was like, they're, they're like not. A, they treat it like a, re, a, a retail establishment, but very secure. <laughs> really secure. You might know about that. <laughs> I would also say that the way I would address the marijuana moratorium or the location for a marijuana dispensary would be different than the way I would approach a methadone uh, clinic. I, I think their purposes, their clientele, their manner of operation are different. And I think that we might uh, look at it differently. Here's a thought. Um, for our next, not 30th, not the end of this month, but our, uh, the next Tuesday that we have, um, that we can maybe do something and invite the Planning Commission when we can, if we can secure those two or one or two people to come and give us an opportunity to talk. Let me put it that way. If we can secure those two people or those, uh, those potential application people to come and talk to us, whatever that date it is, if we can do it on an administrative session where either the, we can invite the Planning Commission to come and anybody else who wants to listen, I think that would work. What do you think? I'll try to schedule it for our next administrative session, the second Tuesday yep. of yeah. next month, or the like we did the pre previous month, an hour before the planning commission's meeting, um, right. the following meeting. Okay. As long as we can get someone to agree to come and right. educate yeah. us. So yeah, good. I'm good with that. Anything else on that? Because otherwise, yeah. parking. Mr. Fuller's not here. I was going to make a motion to see if he wanted to strike that, but I'm I, that. you are working on that. Oh, okay. You want to bring us up to date? Well, I'm just doing an we're, I'm doing an analysis of parking from ta similar towns, similar demographics, um, and trying to f uh, bring our parking calculations that we require for businesses um, a back a bit back back more to where they should be, and not providing parking for the graduation. But for the day-to-day day-to-day uh, day operations of the facility, um, that way we're better using our space. There's more green space and less parking lots um, in areas where we don't need it. No, okay. I know the residential, we we pulled back filling. Seems like every petition that's been coming to us, people are getting spastic about. Well, I on the other hand, I'd like to push more parking. Um, off the street. It, it, developers love to put street parking, but it's a real hassle for our public works, and it costs us money trying to, you know, clean them, uh, public safety. Uh, it, I think we've allowed it to get a little bit too out of hand that they can use street parking. Okay, um, how about this, if this is all right? Where it says parking, Gail, can we say parking review? That'll be a little clearer what we're doing. Okay, recommendations to the town council. I can give you a little bit of an update on some things. Um, the budget has not been passed by the town council, but as someone who has actually looked at the different proposals of the uh, of, of the members of the town council, um, they're really trying very hard to get costs down. <clears throat> Our recommendation to add a full-time person really were not consistent with their goals at this time. doesn't mean that they're against the idea, but in this effort to try to cap taxes or in some cases a small increase, um, it just still wasn't doable. Um, every department was taking a bit of a shave. The capital, on the other hand, there may be some opportunities. I don't know. They haven't started talking about that. I suspect their thinking is that the next mayor may have more of an opportunity to be more vigilant about looking at what we can do to update our regulations. So that's pretty much. This is all a, a follow-up to the 
recommendations that Mr. Sohavi and myself sent to the town council members, of which they don't seem to remember receiving, but I talked to them all. And it really didn't make a difference because the minute I said, we want more money in the bond or any more money in capital, they kind of looked at me and said, are you crazy? So not, not this year. <laughs> yes, Mr. Where are they? Have they come to a new number that they're trying to cut to, or are they still trying to get right down to zero? There were different camps, and, and, and I'm from, uh, from being a witness last night. There are two different approaches that are being brought forward. And one approach that was brought forward would have been a tax increase, a small tax increase, but that got voted down. Um, it was late, it was midnight. I think people were tired, so they recessed. Uh, the second proposal that was put forward really didn't get a chance to be reviewed, um, and that group wanted a chance to go back and review their numbers one more time. So at this point, they're going to have a meeting on Wednesday, tomorrow, to try once again to pass a budget. And it will just be the budget, not the capital. Okay. Mr. Rogoskis, you were there last night. I think, Mark, you were there too, weren't you? Yeah, you were with us. Any thoughts you want to add to that? No. <coughs> yes. Although I wasn't at the meeting, I can just let everybody know that, and I know you know this, we've had some funds given to us because there wasn't a commitment for to hire a full-time town planner. Um, we, were, we had some part-time planning help, um, and as of last night, as far as I know, that is going to be eliminated. So if you folks have enjoyed our improvement on Section 5.3, Mm -hmm. Our enrollment, the CRS program, which will reduce flood insurance for anybody in the flood zone by 15%, um, making it uh, improving and working on the medical marijuana, working on the parking regulations. There's a reason why none of that was happening before I had some of this help. Um, so voice your opinion if you feel like that's something that should stay. I think Mr. Habansky's made a very good point. I hope you, Mr. Paul? Seeing we have to make all these cuts, and we probably have to based on what we have today, but uh, why wouldn't we just go out and bring in a college intern to work on some of these things for free? I, I can answer that, but Mr. Hepansky, why don't you answer it from your words? They're not qualified to do it. College intern? You need it, a master's to do, plant, to be a town planner. I mean, I would essentially just be doing the work for them. For them. So the work Which is... Which I don't have time to do. Okay, so this work is, you're bringing in experience, master's degrees, part-timers. The gentleman that has been helping, uh, Mr. Bansky, uh, was very experienced. He's certified in a half a dozen things, and he was formerly the dir executive director of MetroCog. Yep. So this is... And, and what happens, too, is you pay for what you get. You get less experience, they spend more time, it costs more money. And you don't get the experience that goes with it. And I've had interns hmm. before. And then it just ends up being much more work for the person who's managing them. So you don't want me then. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, no, you're right, because look at just to go be a nurse now, you, there's no more uh, LPNs or RNs or whatever. Uh, you have to have a bachelor's degree and uh, the other one now, so it's, Everything has changed. Yeah. But going back to what uh, Mr. Bansky said, uh, this is going to be a really tight sure. budget. And I believe and I agree with him that, you know, you as commissioners should voice in an email, make your thoughts known as what's important because this is a budget that affects the, budget, the, the public. And uh, 10 people are trying to figure out what the public wants. I mean, we all have as much of a responsibility to do what's right for the community as well. So I encourage you to write them. Well, and you know, you asked earlier if I had anything to say, not at the moment, but now um, I do. It it's just goes back to the state and to just stay with the town. It just goes back to years of squandering away. Not doing the right maneuvers. Everybody's got a vision and not paying this and not doing that and adding people. 
and uh, this is where we're at now. Mr. Rigaskis? Yeah, I've got a question for Jay. Um, was this position eliminated in the mayor's budget? So it, it has I believe so. Okay. So none of, none of the budgets that have been brought forward so far have that position. Okay. Yes. And that was a couple of years ago, right? He eliminated that? No, this is new. Well, I, re I reproposed it for this upcoming budget cycle, and it didn't make the final proposal oh. to council. <laughs> you got benched. Well, that'll happen. You have to, if you don't ask, you don't get. Mm -hmm. you at least got to ask. But this is a start. So what is the position currently there in, in last year's budget? The position was funded? No. The okay. line is still there. It just says there's no funding to it. So I fulfill both positions. I run the zoning office and I run all planning activities. Okay, but, but you've had the assistant. Right, right. I'm obviously a little confused here, though, because I thought you said you've got somebody. The part you, time. Part time. Part time. And they're eliminating that, or they keep. Correct. That, okay. that, right. well, that was proposed last night. That was know. one of the proposals. They're still mulling it over, but that was one of the proposals. Okay, but that position wasn't being eliminated in the original budget the mayor submitted? The or mayor submitted part time. The mayor submitted some funding for a part time person. So status quo, basically. Status quo, yes. Right. Which isn't as of three weeks ago. Status quo, quo. You know, this person wasn't there up until maybe right. a month ago. Oh, okay. So um, it is important that we speak up because a lot of departments work with part-time people as a way of getting work done without taking on the cost of a full-time person. On the other hand. Part-time positions are easy cuts when you're scrambling for dollars. And not everyone always has the opportunity to see the value of what that part-time person does. Although most people understand the cost associated with eliminating a full-time person. So it's not that they're bad folks, they're just trying to find the rock and a hard place. Yes, Mr. Paul. I'm not in the administration of the building of what goes on in town hall, but the, uh, there are positions within the administration that we have to weigh against the importance of what that position is doing today versus what the town needs today. And those positions and those functionalities need to be looked at, and prior prioritize them, and decide what's best for this town, what's going to be best for this town to grow. And those are the kind of thoughts that need to go on in these budget hearings and in the administration. There are positions that we need to look at and say, well, what's more important? I think and, that's and make what, the decisions. I think we're saying the same thing. They're trying to do that. But if we believe as a zoning commission that the assistance that Mr. Urbanski has received from the part-time person to accomplish some of these goals that we have set forth and the changes to the regulations <coughs> that we have made, if we see that as valuable, and I think it has been, then it is incumbent upon us to speak up to explain to our council members that there is value in that in that position, even as a part time. So the um, without that now, when we wanted to talk about reworking our regs that were from like 1956, that's still all up in the air. Without that person, without it that. makes it difficult. Yeah. Did any and, and just one other thing? Did anybody ever see that article that was out about zoning regs? And just after we had our meeting and the this ones in Trumbull? Well, these were builders and they met in uh, Norwalk and they weren't happy with some of the regs and I wanted to bring that up because we were talking about that and I was now that we're not gonna have that. Hope they don't take regs from certain places like I don't want to mention the towns, but they weren't happy because that's what they did. They looked at this town, that town and, and I think I'll just say Norwalk said this is all right, that's what we're doing, and now these people are the Fairfield Building Association. It's like, yeah, that ain't working for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, so there's just fuel for thought that, you know, all right, just because they're doing it doesn't make it right. I right. can guarantee you that the homeowners, the Home Builders Association of the state of Connecticut, they look at every single text advertisement for municipal, every single one in every single town to make sure that there's not something going in that's against their interest. And there are many, many, many lawsuits 
from Home Builders Associations. So luckily we haven't had any because we hope we're doing things the right way. Yeah, I know. I should have made more copies. I wasn't thinking. Okay, let me just, in, in the interest of time, uh, the POCD, <coughs> I don't have anything new. Um, I think that was intended for us to review the POCD, although that's been sort of incorporated in with the TOD. Would you all have an objection to combining the POCD slash TOD into one bullet item? Yeah, I would. You want to keep them separate? Yeah. Okay. No, I, that, I'm not married to it. Just asking. That POCD, that's... How many pages is that roughly, Jay? Is that, I'm, not, I'm not trying it's about to... 70. 70, I yeah. Want to say it's like 74 pages. Roughly. That's if yeah. you have the big book. It's a yeah, book. that's right. Yeah. But well, you can yeah, get to it online. It's on the, on the yeah, website. Yeah, it's easier yeah, online. Yeah, special paper. I was going to print it out, the heavier. You, you can print it out. <laughs> I printed it out. It just comes out really, really tiny when you put it on oh, eight and a half by that. 11. But you can print it out. Yeah, All right. Because I like the papers. Sometimes it's easier for me to flop through than. With that kind of a thing. Yeah, it is. I've also trying to look at it through library. here. And the library has one. I'm going up to my office. Um, TOD, we started a very good discussion on TOD. Let's pick it up because I really want to get back to that so we can make some decisions. One of the things of an action point, Mr. Paul, you were looking at the map. Right. And you were going to come back to us and, and with some specifics in terms of what the, you thought you wanted to do. Yeah, I actually um, did two things. I spent about an hour with mayors, Mayor Harkins uh, on the matter. Uh, he was very gracious, spent a lot of time with me to give me a lot of the background of where this TOD came from and, and what's going on with it. I was surprised to hear because I was asking for a task force and I asked him about that and he said that there is a three member, he's not calling it a task force, he's calling it a commission and I didn't get the names who are on this commission but uh, you might want to go back and maybe find out who it is because I'd love to have them give us an update as to how they're doing that would help us understand where we're going with TOD, if there's an ongoing task force on it. Well, uh, I've actually <laughs> recommended that it's a TOD committee, and I found out about it two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I asked, I, I recommended that they change their name because mm -hmm. it's really just about center school. It has nothing to do with the TOD as a mm. whole. Nothing at all. So, so, so there's no, so, so once again. Yeah, the, I mean, they're the, talking about some TOD related stuff, but it's more about the center school site than it is the transit oriented development overlay issue. Yeah. In so fact, it's entirely talking about the that. And, and so. Subcommittee. Subcommittee. Yeah. And so, that, so therein lies the issue with, uh, RDA. with, with TOD. RDA. And, um, you know, I, I'm still thinking that uh, he made me, you know, I, I was led to believe that, uh, okay, there's an overarching commission no. looking at this as no. it moves along. Uh, so there's still a void in my mind that uh, there isn't that overarching folks that are knowledgeable and, and looking at TLD growth. Um, but then again, it was a great meeting. We spent a lot of good time. I was uh, very uh, pleasantly happy that uh, he was able to spend so much time with me going over a lot of things, uh, which I felt a little bit easy about. Uh, and, and I felt kind of like there's a lot of work involved in trying to do something now where there has been things put in place with, with TOD that we can maybe use at least in our analysis as to what some of the uh, projects are that comes before us from developers. Uh, but then after I met with the mayor, I went in and I went to go see Jay. And Jay gave me these fantastic maps. I only brought three extra copies, but I think, I think you maps have we already had. And so here's, here's where I'm coming from, because this map uh, does jigsaw around that circumference, which is, was very enlightening when I saw this map. So rather than reinvent a wheel and try to redraw this back down <coughs> to a quarter of a mile, I say maybe we could, as a commission, just try to steer the development within a closer range, at least, to the railroad station uh, so that we absorb the, and we put the, the, the density 
closest as possible to Metro North. Um, and at the same time, as that's evolving, uh, I still haven't given up on the thought that the platform can move closer to where the Briggsmore property is. And uh, the discussion I had with the mayor was, there is a possibility to move that platform further north. And that, that's not been taken off the table. Um, um, but I made it clear when I, when I talked to him, and he didn't think it was a bad idea. We need to bring Bricksmore back to the table and have an open dialogue and find out how we can work together to come up with possible solutions that we can okay. both live with. But, okay, I, I have to stop you here just for a moment. One of the rules, and I've got to be sensitive to it, is, is that we can't talk about a specific uh, developer or a specific application because we will prejudice ourselves going forward, even if it comes in later. So it would be, it's important that we don't look at the names of specific um, properties as we're talking. But if we're looking at the TOZ zone, that is property. Yes, but we're not talking about any particular property or project. We're talking about like where we left it, you wanted to change the radius. The other idea that many of us have brought forward was looking at changing the density. Um, and that's not talking about any particular application. Well, because it's me talking about it, and I, I mentioned Briggsmore, uh, by the time Briggsmore even came up to a commission meeting for many developer, I'll be long Mr. gone after this But, But, Mr. Commission. Paul, we won't. And, I, and, and I know. through your actions, you will prejudice, you could potentially predetermine our ability to uh, listen to that application. So we can't engage in it, even if you have chosen to recuse yourself. Okay, but let me just say one thing. Uh, without mentioning Briggsmore, we should be able to talk about specific areas in town that we want to see TOD density growth and parking growth to move traffic off of Center Street, off of the center of town. Okay. So we won't talk about names, but we could talk about the locations within the TOD radius, for lack of a better word, and within TOD, that footprint, uh, there is property that would be better suited, uh, that could be used if we started to, let's say, um, point out the opportunity to developers. Um, I'm sure I, I look at two, two key things in my mind. We've got a congestion problem in the center of town, number one. We got a parking problem around and in the railroad station. There's people on a waiting list that's, and it's going crazy over there. People came and dropped people off because they're getting fined for doing that. That just shows me that we've got major problems with capacity there. Okay. And so I'm just trying to think of where we can get relief and okay. what areas to look at for so that relief. Let's take your thoughts and translate it to a specific regulation that you want to address, because that's where our role is at right now. We're looking at regulations and taking those same thoughts that you have, which regulation specifically would you want to adjust so that it will meet your goals that you're trying to accomplish? I'll go back to this. Uh, rather than regulation, it goes back to recommendations to me. Uh, there was a recommendation by the CISO group, and it's in the plan and conservation development document. I pointed out the page months ago. So the CISO group recommended a location to give us relief with parking and traffic congestion in the center of town. So I'm looking at the recommendations, not so much the regulation. Okay, so that would mean that the Planning Commission would, be, would have the purview for that. That's what their role is. Our role is specifically regulations. Um, if you're looking at bigger projects, it might be economic development. 
I'm just trying to focus what we are able to do in its regulations. So our discussion last month was looking at a specific regulation as to, and a couple of them, that we may want to adjust, which would mean that Mr. Urbanski would write up different language, bring it back to us, and then we would, like we've done other things, uh, change the text and bring it to planning and have hearings to see what that looks like. Okay, so... So uh, let what, me leave it with you. What, what are you asking for then? You're, I'm not going to propose a regulation to well, move into a specific location. Okay. Because there's no regulation that does that. Then I would probably take it up with Mr. Sohavy if that's what you want to do. But right now, and I want to move on, there are some specific regulations that we were talking about that we might want to change. Mr. Giuliano? Sure. Just off the top of my head, I'd like to change the parking, the heights, and the density. <laughs> <laughs> and I have one other thing I want to uh, I want to uh, say. This is a comment, okay? Um, numerous times, all of us have been up here, and we have people come in front of us, right? And we always ask either if they're in the TOD or where they're at. And one of my big questions is, they always put like. Well, we're going to do mixed use maybe later, but we can't maybe do this, that. You heard, you know the story. Well, and I always try to ask, you know, what's your marketing for? And I've even asked economic development what they're doing. And I almost died the other day when L.L. Bean, and I said L.L. Bean a hundred times. I says Tommy Baham, who, oh, I don't want to say any more names. 9,000 square foot in New Haven, their third place. Does anybody reach out to these people? I mean, we have places they could have came, we could have done, and, and I don't know. I repeat myself, but nobody listens. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Imagine that, 9,000 square foot. I've been saying L.L. Bean anywhere, even if it was a small satellite store. But anyways, going back to TOD. <laughs> no, I, well, hey, like I said, we're always asking about marketing here and nobody's uh, helping us and now you see somebody like that that would have been a great for us no I, I, going back to the parking I, I, I we got to give them more parking some of these it just seems a little less I don't think we're pulling in the Millennials we're not okay. and all right let's, let's I'm gonna try to get us a little focus mr. miss yeah. Pippen yeah I have a question TOD that's an option, am I correct in saying that? The TOD, well, the TOD it, right now is a half a mile radius. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But like the petitions that are coming forward to us, that's an option for them to go TOD, am I correct? It's an yes. overlay. Yes, okay. It's an overlay. So I, know, I know Mr. Paul wanted to tighten it a little, but I wonder if we should just leave it. Joe, at, at a half a mile. Well, after my meeting with the mayor, I am saying let's leave it. Okay. But, but also as yeah. we leave it, let's maybe as we articulate to some maybe. of these proposals, yeah. we, we talk about something, uh, you know, trying to get closer to that Metro North. Yeah. Okay. The, the problem is that the, that the um, right now the economy is, is not great. And I think TOD is just not, am I correct, guys, when I'm saying that? It's well, just part not of moving the reason. forward. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's part of the problem, but I'll go back to what I'm always saying. We are not set up. This area is not set up for it. If you could move the green here in part of Barnum Ave, that's what we need to do. And I'll say it again, where are all our big builders? Well, well where is the TOD board? How come we don't have them? I hear there's a hundred of them in line for Shakespeare and none of them in line to help us on Barnum Ave over here to get that going, because how are you going to do it here? What are you going to do here? Eminent domain some of these people? What are you going to eminent o domain the fire department? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you got to... Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to try to... I hope you're with me a little I'm bit. I'm with you. That. I'm with you a lot. Right, so I'm going to try to take your thoughts, and I'm going to try to focus us a little bit. If you bear with me. So we can turn this into something that is actionable, all right? Um, I didn't bring my book with me this time, but I had it the last time, but it was nine, page 97, number D. Um, and I know a couple of you have your books. 
and it was the particular section that talked about density. Now, it's just one section. There's other sections, Mr. Giuliano, like you mentioned, on height and parking, and, and all of those are good. But I'm trying to get us to look at, at least looking at one of them, and then we can add the others. And in this particular case, the way it's worded, it's for density. For developments containing residential uses, the maximum residential density shall be 50 bedrooms per 40,000 square feet of lot area, as defined in section 1.24, okay? Which is how our applicants come up with whether or not they can have 130 bedrooms or 100 and 10 bedrooms or 40 bedrooms. And you often will hear them speak to that, that they could have a whole lot more bedrooms than uh, that we're considering because the regulations allow that. And my suggestion was to look at changing that number 50 and reducing it, which means that there would be less density in that square footage. Did I lose anybody so far? You're okay? No, that's, that's, right. no, that's fine. That's what... Now, our experience has shown is different numbers of densities, and I'm gonna actually let Mr. Herbansky speak to this a little bit better. But from what I calculated or learned, none of the applications that we have approved or have been reviewing have actually been at 50 per 40,000. Most of them have averaged, I think, somewhere around 40. Is that said right? Okay. And even at 40, we haven't been particularly happy all the time. That's why I was suggesting we look at that number. That's a significant difference. And maybe look at at 35. It may knock it down five or six units. What we need to do is calculate what is a comfortable number of units per square footage that we would find admissible. You still have a special case, but it gives more guidance to the applicant of what is generally acceptable. Any thoughts, Mr. Paul? Well, two questions before I get thoughts. Why, why are developers trying to develop under the umbrella of TOD versus just a normal development plan outside of TOD, what's the determining difference that's making them make that decision? What, what's the benefit for them? The incentives of the density. The currently it's only could, density. Currently they could build 11 units per, 11 units per acre. The, the TOD rewards the, rewards the uh, applicant with higher densities. Um, so they are either, and, and a reduction in parking by trying to infuse more people and try to remove more cars from your downtown. Discourage cars, encourage more, pe more people parking, more people walking. So, right, and just to give anybody an idea, last meeting you gave out what an acre was. So with that number there, so what we need to put in perspective is 40, ugh. 40,000 square feet, that's, you know. Just under an acre. Just under an acre, Three so thousand. you're looking at, you have to visualize an acre. Everybody has to go look what an acre looks like, drive around somewhere, that's an acre, or, or look, if, and physically look at it, or if you can mentally do it, fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. And realize that you're putting 50 bedrooms in there. That's exactly right. Now, one of the ideas that Mr. Fuller brought forward, which I thought was a really good idea, is that under the concern that the applicants, the applications that we have experienced, most of them, if not all of them, did not include mixed use. And the idea was, is that you had a, a very uh, tight uh, density allowance, and you reward them with more density if they put mixed use. So no mixed use, you don't get many bedrooms. You put mixed use in, you get a little bit of a bonus, and you get a little higher density. 
think that's a very good idea. Yeah, I, I thought it was a very good idea as well. Now, TOD is always going to have more density than the regulations of a normal neighborhood. That's the whole purpose of it, is to, like Mr. Herbansky said, encourage more people walking, <coughs> less cars. So we can't go too far the other side and say, well, we're, we're going to bring it down to what a single home would be. That's, that defeats the purpose. And it also affects our economic development as well. But they're not putting any at use. But they're not putting it at use. So where I'm at now, where we're at now, is giving direction to our zoning administrator of how to proceed, how to look at rewriting that paragraph in a way that meets our consensus as to what we are interested in, what we want to accomplish. And this is just one segment. I understand that there's parking and there's height, but this is just one segment. And by the way, it does sort of overlap in height because we do have height restrictions now, 60 feet. You bring down the number of units, bedrooms, typically the height isn't as necessary. Yeah, but with that being said, we've had some places that I've sat here on and one height was I think everybody would agree was too much and it should have been less. And then we have another one that is too much. And then they wanted to eliminate some places and then make that even higher. So we, we're kind of, as far as I'm concerned, we're kind of contradicting ourselves. So, I think we need to just say, you know what, it's three stories, that's it. Well, <laughs> let's take your thoughts and try to put it into I'm just something. Saying. Right. Well, let's try to take your ideas and put it into something that we can work with. Now, I will also say, and I'm actually agreeing with you, there are other locations in this TOD where uh, 60 feet or higher I would be satisfied with because they're so far away from residential areas that wouldn't, bo wouldn't bother me. For example, you have Tide Harbor. Tide Harbor is set back far enough, and that's a five-story building. The Ramada Inn is a six-story building. Now, I wouldn't put those two buildings on Main Street, but where they're at, I would be satisfied with. So I think it has a little bit of balance. We need to be able to have some flexibility in our, in our, in our codes. And that's what I'm trying to do, is help us get all of our ideas out so that we can give some direction to Mr. Urbanski so he can write that. <laughs> Mr. Paul. <laughs> I think I can, I can probably buy off on the density incentives where the further away, and I'm going to go back to that quarter mile radius versus half a mile. If you're coming in at a quarter mile where we want you, then it becomes something that we incent you with a density that's going to be more favorable for the developer. But if you go outside that quarter mile, then we have to have some requirements such as, think about what are we trying to solve? We're trying to solve traffic problems going into the center, going to that train station. So how do you solve that without building another parking garage somewhere? If you're going to build outside that quarter of a mile, um, outside that quarter of a mile, and you go out to the half a mile, and we know people aren't going to really want to walk a half a mile to the train station, then the, the incentive needs to be give us some way in your proposal that you're going to provide transportation, mass transit, busing, trolley, something to get people in to the train station so that you don't add cars anymore. You're adding the mass transit. And, and that looks beautiful. You put trolleys down these streets out here. It's a beautiful thing for the town. I've said so, that plenty of times. Yeah, so th those are the kind of things you build in as an incentive so that you're accomplishing two things. You're bringing the developers and sending them to get closer to the Metro North, and you're getting out the traffic because they're going to provide some kind of mass transit busing or trolleys or something to get people in if they're going to go outside that quarter of a mile. So we have to do something where we're rewarding for one, 
and maybe not rewarding as much for the other. Okay. And then we got to be careful with understanding what the developers are using to fund their project. Because if they're funding these projects with tax credits, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a very slippery slope in tax credits. Uh, there's a lot of loopholes in using tax credit dollars. And I know we can't manage that, but I'm just saying that we need to be aware of it because there's been cases cited where developers are using tax credits and they're doing certain schemes for kickbacks in the process by changing the number of units that they're applying for. They apply for a lot of units, but all the time they're only going to build half of that number of units, so they're getting more money than they need in tax credits. And then they give those tax credits to the bank for funding. So that's not what we have to worry about. Yeah, but I'm say, just throwing that out there as something to be aware of that's happening in the industry. You, you probably know much more about that. How about this as a suggestion? Looking at the map, if everybody looks at the map, so we can be a little more specific. In the legend, the very last item is a dotted line. It's called TOD-1 Active Ground Floor Uses. And what that established was certain locations where um, mixed use was required. And there's probably more places that you would have required mixed use than what was established. We could look at changing that. Another thing we could do, and here's just a thought, I'm throwing out ideas. Since we're looking at possibly different circumstances with different heights, maybe you want to have some attachment where this location, we're okay with a higher, you know, another TOD-2 height allowance. I'm just throwing out some ideas that, um, for example, see the purple area there that is purple and it says MA, which I think is Ross and Robert's property? You might want to say that location has a different dotted line on it and we allow greater height allowances. But on the other hand, when we're on, let me see, by the train station and you'll see a little, couple of little tiny triangles that say TOD-1, a tiny, tiny, tiny cannon, you might say we don't want as much height in those. That way it's a little more concrete and specific to someone who's looking at what's available. Do you like that idea? Yeah, I, you're, I and think, then I think you're comes, spot on. And then special case comes before us with a higher height? Well, they're all going to be special case. Well, but I'm just saying. I'm yeah. No, you I, still have the ability to say no. Yeah. And I think you're spot on because I don't think you would want our highest ones over here when you can put them over there. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it, don't forget, you still have where this goes down. No, I don't want to take it out of there because you're already set with this. <laughs> I'm just going to say going down Main Street into mm -hmm. uh, towards Stratford Avenue uh, on the, just the outskirts of the uh, historic district. You're not going to want to see four stories there. Well, Maybe. I, that's just me personally. I'm just I, saying. I, I'm sorry. It's a good idea. That's why I'm trying to bring our ideas and focus this back on the map because that is the easiest to convey when we're talking to the general public. Jay, you want to jump in here? I just wanted to just add to what you were, we were talking about, the height and maybe TOD2. I just want to encourage everyone to read section 7106K. 7106K. Um, and it talks about the maximum heights of buildings. I think what we're talking about is actually already included in the re regulations. It gives us the flexibility in any location, anywhere in the TOD, to grant a higher, a higher, um, a greater height of 75 feet. That's a, that's a tall building. It's a very tall building. And without having to add anything else, I know a lot of times a developer will come in and say, well, your regulations say it's a maximum of this. Okay, well, that's great. We don't have, you folks don't have to grant them that just because the zoning regulations say that's what the maximum is. It's your call. And I, 
And so re I just encourage that you guys read through that section a few times because I think that actually gives you the flexibility of choosing how high a building should be based on where it is and proximity to train and, and other stuff and residential, residential neighborhoods. Okay. Just a thought. Well, that, that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about where I always thought we were kind of committed, for lack of words, three or four stories, and then one other time, well, we'll add a, we'll let go another one, according to you, what you're saying, because it's in there. And I just don't think that's proper for a TOD. I think they should, I don't think, just my opinion again, I just don't think they should be higher than four. I, I don't think, I think you're taking, when, if you read the TOD and you go to that Cecil thing, the, the 2010 Cecil thing and read that, they only suggest you doing this height and to make it, and they give you all these uh, pictures that, you know, what it's supposed to look like to make think, it more. So, so I think what Mr. Giuliano, I'm going to say if I'm saying this correctly, is that even though we have the ability to not grant them those heights, we, he would prefer, and I, I think I understand, he would prefer that there are still limitations even lower than what we have the flexibility to impose so that there isn't this um, tendency to, to try to build out to the max. Okay, I'm watching the time and I just want to be fair. This is the last item. H how about I make a suggestion because I would like for us to make, we've talked about this a couple of times, to turn this into an accomplishment. Mr. Bensky, do you think you have enough feedback from us to look at number D and make a recommendation back to us that we could start working with, with language? I do. Um, the next, I wouldn't be able to do it by May 30th. No. There's just too much going no. on. Uh, but by mid-June, mid uh, I'm confident I'd be able to come back with some suggestions with uh, a rationale and our intent and purpose to why I, we think that those numbers are what they are based on your suggestion. Before the 25th? 25th of <laughs> December? <laughs> no, yeah, by, I, I, I would, I, I would, my goal would be to have it done by um, the administrative session in June. So second Tuesday in June. Yeah, I found that second. I'm already working on it. I'm already working on, on revising density based on some of, the, some of the feedback I've been hearing from you folks. Yeah, I found that section. I already been reading it, got it all highlighted out. So, <laughs> no, but I, 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 I don't know. It, it, I mean, I, Mr. Paul could probably, uh, I, I don't think we should be that high in the area. I think it takes away from the TOD yeah. and okay. being in real estate. I, so, think, I think we're all with you. So. I want to get us to a point of, can we move forward to allow Mr. Hrabanski to come back with some language? Yeah. I think okay. A motion or yeah. uh, no, I don't think we need a motion. So. No, no. But we, if you do want to go home, we will need a motion yeah. to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Jay will work on that. For We're us. getting pushed out. <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Like Rikuskis. Second. <laughs> Second by Ms. Pepin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Aye. All right. <laughs>